Outlaw Theology with the Whiskey Preacher. I'm your host, Phil Shepard, better known as the Whiskey Preacher. And today in the Outlaw Theology studio, I use that very loosely, I have a very special guest, Michelle Crable of Novatos, which Novatos is a missional, emergent-ish uh, faith community here in the Metroplex, in the right. Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. You all started in Granbury, but have recently moved to Arlington. Is, is that correct? Yes, we were in Grand Prairie, and now we're in Arlington at the World of Beer on Cooper Street. We met in a very interesting circumstance. Um, our, we have a mutual friend, Kathy Escobar, who is one of the co-pastors of the refuge in Denver, Colorado, and she threw together this retreat for co-pastors almost a year ago in Colorado to talk about uh, what does it mean to be a co-pastor in a missional community? And you all originally were supposed to be there, and Chris and Nanette, who are also your co-pastors, were supposed to be there as well, and they ended up being able to come, but um, due to Kent, who's your husband mm -hmm. and co-pastor as well, uh, his father died and you all couldn't come. However, you and I and Kent and Steph met up a couple times before the retreat even happened because we didn't even know each other's communities existed. That's right. And it has been fun to find another missional community um, around the area. And um, I'm really just have enjoyed having you all, having a connection with you all. One of the reasons why I have you here on Outlaw Theology is, is I, I want to talk specifically about your evolution from being fairly conservative theologically growing up to being a, a blogger who openly talked about your evolution of becoming open and affirming. Yes. And which got you in trouble with your original church planning uh, church, your mother in church, is that correct? Well, not so much our mother church as our our grandmother church. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, your grandmother church. Okay. Uh, okay. And and I honestly um, the our our parent church that we planted out of, uh, which is Mosaic in Arlington and Mosaic of Arlington and and Stephen Hammond there. He's a very good friend uh, still to us and. Um, he was asked what he was going to do about us, and he said, nothing. I'm not going to do anything about them because I don't think I need to do anything about them. So um, I'm actually very thankful to Stephen. He's let, he has, not let us is the wrong word. Um, he has em embraced us as we are, even in the areas where he may not personally agree with um, our theology. He has embraced us. He continues to support us and love us, even in areas where we may not agree 100% theologically, which, um, you know, who do I agree 100% theologically with? Probably not you, probably not my own husband. Um, and yet we still uh, can love and respect and um, have a dialogue and a conversation because at one point, I didn't believe what I believe now. And were it not for dialogue and conversation and people who uh, have respect for each other, even with differing opinions, I would not be where I am theologically today, which some people say is not a good thing. Some people say it's a good thing. But, um, you know, that I will leave well, up to the viewer. You chose to have this dialogue, though, on a very open space. You started a blog. What's the name of your blog? My blog is called Word of a Woman. Word of a Woman. And it's a dot com. Word of a Woman dot com. Dot com. <laughs> and you openly had this conversation on Word of a Woman about how you progressed theologically, specifically on the issue of LGBTQ. Correct. Uh, and tell me a little bit, and tell us, a little bit about 
how that how did that evolution happen? What does that look like for you? Yeah, it's really the weirdest thing because I did not set out to have this conversation. I didn't I wasn't looking for it. It wasn't like, oh, today I'm going to sit down and decide what I think about LGBTQ and and where I stand theologically and it was and so I'm going to start a blog and I'm going to put all this on the blog and I have this big plan because anybody who knows me knows I'm just not like that. What happened was a couple days after Christmas about a year and a little over a year and a half ago I thought to myself I have something to say. I never considered myself a writer until I started this blog at 40 two and a half years old or whatever I was at the time. And now I actually consider myself a writer and I love writing and I don't know, because I still the, don't journal, but I do write a blog. One of the surprises about the blog is you never intended or never thought people would actually be reading it, but people are no. reading it a lot. And no, I did, I'm so, still shocked by that. And. So much so that when you started having this conversation about, you know, your evolution into being an open and affirming pastor, that that created a lot of buzz around your blog. It did. And so, tell me, tell us a little bit more about. So you started this blog, right? And you started talking about openly the questions that you had theologically about um, gay and lesbian and transgender and questioning folks. Where did their place uh, have, where did they have a place in the kingdom of God? And, uh, you know, you kind of bucked all the traditions that you had grown up with. Uh, first becoming a, a pastor and then having an authoritative voice as a woman and now having a voice as an ally in the LGBTQ community. It's really interesting because my husband and I were having this conversation and I'm not even sure how it started but somebody that I know and they have a son who is gay and they uh, are still praying for him to be healed. They believe he will be a prophet who leads lots of people out of being gay. So they have, they have an alienated relationship with him. Um, and that was a beginning of a lot of our conversation, I think, was just discussing that and how, you know, and I don't even know how we were discussing it. It's all sort of fun because it just, the way Kent and I both are, we both are very verbal, and so we'll start talking about one thing, and just like here, I'll end up talking about something completely different. So we may have been talking about what to buy at the grocery store and ended up talking about our friend who had a son who was gay. So I, I'm not exactly sure how we got there, but my husband said something to me, uh, and I had been reading some things and seeing some things online, and um, just, and so we were having conversations and he said to me, well, maybe you should go through all the passages, the, the, as they call them, the clobber passages in the scriptures, everywhere that it mentions anything that people use to condemn uh, homosexuality, uh, gay people being fully included in the church, um, Thing that people use on that topic. And I said, well, that's a good idea. He, he apparently didn't wasn't saying that I should do that on the blog, but <laughs> I didn't understand that, so I, I started on uh, this Monday series. I just decided that every week on Monday, I was going to write about one of the passages. So I didn't do it all first and then, you know, whatever. I just sat down with that passage, read it through, got out all the commentaries and got out all the, you know, got online and looked at what people said on both sides of the issue because goodness knows there's tons of stuff out there written on both sides of the issue. Books, 
and we ordered a lot of books on Amazon and Audible and um, a really good book that I would highly recommend is Justin Lee's book Torn uh, I think that's on the Jericho imprint and uh, I think that's a very good just introductory book for people who want to have the conversation and he's just such a calming force. He is just an amazing, uh, compassionate, respectful, just the way he, I so admire him and the way he has these conversations with people who disagree with him and sometimes virulently so. Um, and I, I really admire him, but he was one of the people I found along the way in gaychristian.net and um, just lots of places. And so I'm reading and I'm just blogging what I'm finding, what is resonating with me after reading all these different sources and just putting it on there. And um, I think my first really big post actually was before this series. My first, I just started writing about some things that were coming up in the news and, and just what my feelings were on it. And I was coming out more on the um, welcoming and affirming side. Um, and there was a, a letter, I think, an open letter uh, to to a woman who wrote to her son about being gay. And I, and which had sparked something to me. I wrote one called Pray Away the Gay, which is still, well, Pray Away the Gay, question mark, I should say. And it's still my biggest post ever. Um, and it was my biggest single day uh, post. And um, it really is the thing that got my husband and I really talking and started this series. And once the series started and the Chick-fil-A thing happened and all of this stuff is like, you know, and the you know, marriage equality stuff is just huge hitting the news and, you know, the American Family Association's throwing... You can say crap, shit out there. Yeah, it's throwing shit out there that just... Even, even if you are on that side, you should not embrace. Um, and, and so I think it's just this perfect storm, which caused, you know, then my blog just sort of got out, got, got brought in amongst all of that. And uh, it's certainly not the only issue I blog about, as you know, um, but it is probably uh, the single issue that has, has uh, caused the most traffic on my blog um, because it is such a, it, I mean, it is to me one of the one of the big civil rights issues of our time. Obviously, human trafficking. I mean, there are there are other big issues, but as far as facing the church, um, I think uh, egalitarian versus complementarian women in leadership is big um, uh, in in our generation still unfortunately uh, yes um, i was going to say unfortunately unfortunately that is still controversial and not widely uh accepted and practiced um lgbt just the full inclusion of lgbtq persons uh is obviously a huge issue both uh in politically which is a whole nother I have a whole other thing to say about that and why I think you should embrace that politically, whether or not you embrace it theologically. I don't think you, if you're American, you have a leg to stand on on that. Um, yeah. <laughs> just, and I write about that. I write about the political side of it as well. I don't just write about the theological side of it. I also have written plenty on the political side of it on, and why I think people of faith of all stripes can, can in good conscience, even if they believe, which I do not, that being gay in itself, apart from practice, is, is, is sinful, I still think that, that you, you, you must embrace politically full equality for all people in the United States of America. Um, but the, I digress. That's, Ten words or less. Oh, how, challenge. Yes. <laughs> Ten words or less. How has becoming an open and affirming pastor enriched your life? Ten words or less. You can count them out. You need to, if you need to use your toes, you can too. <laughs> I, 
I don't. I have ten fingers. I don't need my toes. <laughs> um, letters from people who say they are closer to Jesus. That's letters from people who say they're closer to Jesus because because of reading the blog frequently the letters that I have gotten the most are from people who are from the LGBTQ community who said I thought that God did not love me and that he wanted nothing to do with me when I read this it makes me think that he still wants me. I'm going, to I'm going to try and err on the side of loving and including as many people as I can. And if, if spirituality is a continuum and somebody is moving closer to Jesus because of something that I have son said or done on this issue, I think that that is better than me pushing them further away. One of the verses that I think of most often is when, when it comes to this is where it, it talks about you shut the door of heaven in people's faces. And I do not want to be the person who is shutting the door in somebody else's face. And it's interesting because it says now you can't even get in, you know, the doors, you know, you shut the door and you know, they can't get in and you can't either. Um, and so when people say, well, you know, you're going to have to answer for every word that you've written on this blog, I say, yes, and I'm ready to because everything that I have said or done here is in the interest of seeing people reunited with Jesus who loves them it, no matter what, no matter what. And, and, and the good news is that he's not, counting, he's not counting their sins against them, no matter what they are. I don't care what they are. He, it said, you know, it, it's either enough or it's not. And it's either enough for me, if it's enough for me, it's enough for you. And if it's enough for you, it's enough for whoever. And if it's not enough, it's not enough. Well, last question. Yeah. Somebody who is not struggling with the issue of LGBT uh, personally, but somebody who is struggling with the idea of being inclusive as an ally, as a father, as a mother, as a brother, as a child, what is the one piece of encouragement that you feel like you can give to those people who are wrestling with that topic? I think the, the one thing that is the most important to me is what Jesus said was the most important thing. And that's loving, I mean, loving God and loving our neighbor. Everything else, everything else, in one other place it says everything hinges on the loving your neighbor. Everything else that you can find before or after or not even in this the 66 canonized books. Anything you can find. For Protestants. Yes. Anything you can find fits in that. It doesn't say if. It doesn't say unless. It doesn't say until the person does this, or unless they do this, or unless they become that, or unless they choose this, or unless they're born this way, or unless they say these things, or unless they believe this, or unless they whatever, it doesn't say that. It doesn't give you that option. You always have the option to choose not to love. But if you're going to do, if you're going to follow Jesus, you are going to have to love And so that's, I mean, that's the, that's, for me, 
the biggest encouragement that I can give to people. Um, is that's, I mean, that's, and the funny thing is people point out to me all the time, well, so, so you have somebody in your life who you're close to who's gay. <laughs> no, actually I don't. And people are like, oh, well, that really messes people up because they think, well, you're close to somebody, so you want to believe this is a certain way because you love this person, and so your judgment is clouded because I, I don't have a relative that I know of who's out. I don't, you know, my best friend growing up, my, I, I don't, I, I, I know plenty and call friends people who are the LGBT community. Um, not as many as as people might think from reading my blog, but that doesn't matter. One of the things I've been most thankful about with blogging is because it's really uh, opened up my circle of, of friends, and it is the reason that we know each other. Yeah. The, me starting that blog has started all kinds of other things in my life, intentional and unintentional. Mostly unintentional, because I'm telling you, it was a complete whim starting this blog. And because of the blog, I met I met Kathy um, through her reading one of my posts and me reading some of her posts and we became connected and then she was already connected to you and so then we became connected and now I'm connected with people all over the world who I never would have A, known existed, B, it just has given us um, a community larger than ourselves, um, which which often when you're in a smaller missional community is very difficult to find. Um, and it, even when it's out there, it's very difficult to find. And because of the miracle of the internet, um, <laughs> it shrinks the world. Yeah. It shrinks the or world white, and white. it widens it and shrinks it all at the same time because it it, it brings us. Close to people in Colorado who we've never met, and who actually have a post called "The Closest Friends I've Never Met," <laughs> um, talking about people like Kathy who've become friends who I've never gotten to see her face. Um, the friends in California and friend, just all over the, all over the world who share um, just a commonality. And it's it's cool because yes, it widens my it, it has widened my view. Probably were it not for the internet, I may not have been, I may not have looked in the same way. I may not have found the same uh, resources and community to uh, to take this journey. At least not in the same way or in as efficient as means as I've taken it. Michelle Crable of wordofawoman.com. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of Outlaw Theology. Is there places where pe other people can and find you? Are you on Facebook, uh, Twitter, any of Yes, those? I'm on Facebook and Twitter as, as uh, Word of a Woman, so you can find me there. Um, you can find Novitas online at novitaschurch.com. Uh, also on Facebook and Twitter is Novitas Church, so if you want to check out any of that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to leave comments in the section below. You can also have this conversation on Twitter. Uh, hashtag Whiskey Preacher. Hashtag Word of a Woman. Um, have this conversation on anywhere you want it. Just continue to have this conversation because it's important that we continue to evolve into the love that God wants us to embrace. Thanks again for joining us, and I look forward to talking to you next time.